I'm in the pretty little village situated in the Tain Valley in Devon. Another lovely little cottage here, thatched roof, plants growing outside, very chocolate box type picture, sort of thing you find on a jigsaw. This is the parish church in the village of Cristo. The church is open, so we'll have a look inside there. Well, this is the inside of the church. It's interesting to see that they still have the pews, and the pews actually with doors to each aisle. And some of these pews are quite elaborately carved probably of great age. The end of this one is very elaborate. I'm not quite sure what it's depicting, but there's a lot of work gone into that. This very clear memorial on the wall is to Elizabeth Gilbert White. For more than 40 years, she was schoolmistress of Christo and organist of the parish church. She died in 1915, aged 74, and the tablet was erected by her many friends and former pupils. This is the memorial to the men of the village of Christo, who died in the First World War. You can see the number of the Wills family there, and we'll see later in the graveyard that several were of the same family. Around 15 names there, and that's a lot of lives in a small town like this. Another one high on the wall, Mary, the daughter of John Smurden, gent of Whites in this parish. That could be 1850. And this one very high up, Joseph Phillips Nichols. 1899. This is a very old one. I can't make the names out from where I am, but I can see that the dates are 1670 something and 1689. There is a large coat of arms between two windows. Very difficult to get this picture because the light from the windows it's affecting the camera, and beneath it, a plaque which says Thomas Moore, 1682. Up towards the altar, behind the rude screen, is a number of memorials to the Pelu family. And across this side of the window, all the way down that wall there. So one is assuming there the Lords of the Manor. And on the left hand wall, much the same. The Pellows seem to have taken ownership of this part of the church. There are some very elaborate memorials. No doubt if one wanted to know more, there'll be histories of the of the Pello family. And on the floor of the church are a number of Memorial stones, entrances to vaults, possibly. This one is 1670. And the one at the end here, just as we come into the brighter light, is 1672. Here lieth the body of Edward Archer the Elder, who died April the 10th, 1672. And more of them down the other aisle. This one, 1645. That one's very worn. Sarah Rolson, or Ronson, 1811. 
and this one very high on the wall, absolutely impossible to read from the ground. I'll give you a close up in case it's readable through the camera lens. Right beside the path is this one with the wonderful epitaph. Susanna, the beloved wife of Samuel Ruddle, 1888. And then, grieve not for me, my friend so dear, nor wish me back again, nor let your heart so troubled be, we soon shall meet again. Weep not for me, you that pass by, as you are now, so once was I, as I am now, soon you will be. Prepare for death and follow me. Over here I notice two of the memorials are in the cast metal. These are not so common. The first one is to Elizabeth Adams, 1916. And then across here got a different design. The name is around the top, Nicholas Adams, and it says Rock of Ages, he died 1913. This one here has a particularly sad tale to tell. This is for the four sons of W.H. and E. Wills of Christo. Charlie Lambert Wills, who dies aged 10 months, George Wills, 8th Devon Regiment, who fell in action in France in the Battle of Luz, 1915. John Jack Wills, late of the ASC, who fell in action in France in the Battle of the Somme. And then Thomas Tom Wills, Royal Berkshire Regiment, who fell in action at Bethune, France, 1918. What a tragic tale. At the very bottom we got, their toils are past, their work is done, and they are full blessed. They have fought the fight, the victory won, and entered into rest. Well, it's wonderful if you could handle it that way, but to lose four sons, one soon after birth, and three in the First War, is a very heavy price to pay. A little further in, there is another monument to the surname Wills, Presumably in a small village like this, some relation. Leonard Wills, 1925, aged 24. And Ernest Henry, his brother, who died aged 30 in 1928. A very large lump of rock, granite, for this memorial. And this one reads, Thomas Cox, for 40 years, the blacksmith at Ashton, Born Henock, 1809, and died 1881. And then his wife, Susan, and then their son who died aged 23. I notice up under this yew tree is a CWGC war memorial. Walk up there, a little bit of green on it from the tree above. We've got Private C. Avery, Devonshire Regiment, 1920. Doesn't give his age on that one. And a stone here that gives an example of child mortality rates in the Victorian era. We have the parents. George Bidder, 1924, aged 72, and his wife in 1902. And then beneath that we have the deaths of his children. George Henry, was only 18 months. Annie Louisa was 13 months. William Henry was 14 months. And Elsie Emmeline was six years. On the ground, just outside the main entrance, are these large memorial slabs. I'm not making out the surname on the left-hand one. But I can see that it dates back to 1800. And then actually in the entrance to the church itself, we got Nicholas Bustle, possibly 
1632 and that's now used as the threshold into the church. Close by the main entrance is this large table tomb and the surname on that is Hamlin. And if I just move to the left you can see this unusual design here. This unfortunately cannot get the surname from it. But an interesting design. You've got the stone plinth with a cloth draped over it with, with the frilly edges and even on the left hand side a tassel. And on top you've got the urn and again draped with a cloth. Well it's quite a small churchyard here in Cristo but there is an extension churchyard down on the road that runs through the Tane Valley. So I'm going to make my way down there now and we'll see what uh, discoveries we can make in the extension. Well, I come a short distance away from the church to have a look at the extension graveyard. This is for the modern graves. Pleasant little spot beside the road that runs through the Tain Valley. I'll pick out this one because it has a little extra information on it. Roger William Jameson died 2014, a Manchester man who lived in, worked in and loved this valley for 30 years. A husband and my friend, a much loved father and grandfather, honest, fair and true, he made a difference to all he knew. This one caught my eye with the wonderful surname. It's something like a character out of Dickens or Agatha Christie. Brimblecombe. Well that's my visit to the parish church in the little village of Cristo in the Tain Valley and included the extension graveyard as well down on the on the road beneath us. Hope you enjoyed it. Till the next time.